everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to show you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. Now as always if you don't want to watch the entire video you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. So let's get started. Starting off with Time of Legends Joan of Arc, we'd like to share with you an Excel spreadsheet that we've been using to keep track of the different tasks that need attention throughout the update process from 1.0 to 1.5. On the left, you'll see the various boxes or sets that all of the content is split into, including the actual name of the scenarios involved in each. The other columns show the various tasks that must, keep, must be completed for each individual scenario. A brief explanation of each category is as follows. First of all, for play testing, this includes the design phase, including concept, research, uh, creation of the rules, play testing, and balancing, as well as the fine tuning that's involved. In the French corrections category, that's where we make all of the changes to the scenarios, all created material for the new scenario into French, making sure that they're ready to be laid out graphically while applying any final tweaks found during playtesting. In the English corrections category, translating all French material into English takes place, making sure that they are ready to be laid out graphically, making sure to eliminate any discrepancies between the French and English scenarios. In the layout phase, we take all of the existing content for a scenario and we lay it out in its final form, which includes assembling the maps, creating new cards and content for a scenario, and formatting paragraphs to fit aesthetically within the graphical layout. And then proofreading is the final pass made on the documents to include internal proofreading and feedback, as well as backer feedback from previously posted files and comments. Now, what this sheet doesn't take into account is all the production stuff that is still forthcoming, such as oversized punch boards, uh, working with game trays, uh, assembling boxes and packaging, etc. that was promised during the campaign. But when it comes to game design and updating to 1.5, this shows us where we're at, which is to say that we've been focusing our attention on the update process for all the materials present from 1.0 to 1.5, and now we're progressing to the Teutonic Knights expansion with the caveat in mind that proofreading of all the other materials is still ongoing. Now, we also want to remind you that the pledge manager for Time of Legends Joan of Arc is now reopened, and this includes the ability for late pledging too. Moving on to Solomon Kane, before we go on with our actual update, we'd like to ask you once again how you feel about our weekly sneak peeks. We have asked this question before, and most of you answered that you'd want them to continue on a weekly basis. So we'd like to ask you this question again, to make sure that we keep you entertained and you don't lose interest along the way. So please let us know in the comments below if you'd like to continue having weekly Solomon Kane updates with sneak peeks into the different stories, or just once every two weeks. And now to our update. We are in the final act of the Wings in the Night expansion. Our Puritan finds himself with a young couple which he takes from the village while the Ancana indulge in their vile sport, glutting their savage appetites. Solomon needs to guide this couple to safety, taking them through the cannibal lands. After days in the jungle domain of the cannibals, Cain leads the couple past the last outpost of the flesh-eating fiends. Beyond lies safety and the territory of friendly tribes. However, at this point, the path ahead of you can either be light or dark based on your previous actions. And this will also define the difficulty of the game. The cannibals know their territory well and are ever vigilant for intruders from rival tribes. How will the couple react? Will they manage to get through the terrifying lands or will they get trapped, needing our hero to save them? The story has several branching paths and based on your choices, Solomon will either be victorious or will face major defeat. So what will happen? What terrors will he encounter? Moving on to Super Fantasy Brawl, some backers have been inquiring about the status of the Feldherbag, and it is currently being produced. 
We validated the foams last week and we are currently waiting on the final design of the bag itself. We have asked Felder for an ETA on the bag and we will update you on that as soon as we can. After the production is finished, they will ship the bags themselves through their own platform. And now for a small update on the shipping. The stock for Super Fantasy Brawl has successfully cleared customs at our Asia hub. They received it and the order addresses to which they will start shipping this week. Next week, we'll probably have more information from our other hubs too. So stay tuned. For Enchanters this week, some of you have been asking about clarification and a double checking of the insert to ensure that the cards and dividers will fit and not produce any lid lift. Now, we have done plenty of research and development with close collaboration between our production manager and the factory to ensure that the best possible insert quality for the game and that it will also fit everything properly inside the box. So we will be working on setting that up and taking some pictures of it this week, and hopefully we'll be able to share them with you next week. Furthermore, we are still on track with the latest estimates for production, so we're doing great on that aspect of the schedule. Moving on to Steam Watchers, today we would like to thank Louis Marie and Severine, who were interns here at Mythic Games. They had their final day as interns at Mythic Games last Friday. With JB, they play tested the heck out of Steam Watchers with a focus on the expansions and cross expansion games. They helped spot minor things we've been able to improve. However, they are sticking with us since we hired them for more play testing. So it's great that we're great. we'll be able to keep them on board. Now we've noticed some questions concerning the amount of time added to the game by the different modules or expansions, and the shortest is Fuel for War, which adds around 20 minutes of gameplay as it provides for more tactical opportunities. The Peace with Wolves Diplomacy module adds 30 minutes, while the Vassal Clan module expands the game for about 40 minutes. Spark of Hope adds another half an hour as well. And here is this week's war leader, Palace of the Catabasians. This is a shortened form of her full name since all Catabasians get a code from Zeus at birth, which evolves during one or a few key steps in their lives. While leading troops from the most prominent Catabasian shelters, Pallas is starting to doubt Zeus's benevolence. Is the AI hiding things from them? Quickly, she decides she doesn't care, rather preferring to favor what she thinks is best for her people, which calls for her to disobey certain orders, ignoring the warnings the AI gives her. And finally, for Hell the Last Saga, we'd like to officially announce that we will be extending our pledge manager and late pledge window until early 2021. The reasons for this is varied, but simply put, we promised that we would have a tabletop simulator ready for you to try the game out on your own. We want to complete the construction of the standalone Hell website, which will contain the rulebook translated into the different languages and many of the graphical elements of the Kickstarter page. And we also wanted to have some physical prototype gameplay videos up for you to check out before the pledge manager closed. So in order to do those things for you and to give you ample time to utilize them in making your decision, a generous extension was warranted. This will also hopefully allow us to have a pledge manager fill rate closer to 100%, which we are currently at 93%. And above all, it will allow you to manage your expenses on hell over the several months. In fact, this long pledge manager and late pledge principle could well be adopted for all future Mythic Games projects. An exact closing date for the Pledge Manager in early 2021 will come near the end of December, but we will keep you informed. Now, just a couple more tidbits for you this week. First of all, keep your eyes peeled for a generous package of videos from Trick Track in the near future. They have been on the ball producing videos for Time of Legends Joan of Arc, Solomon Kane, Super Fantasy Brawl, Hell the Last Saga, Enchanters, and Darkest Dungeon. And speaking of Darkest Dungeon, consider yourself cordially invited to join the newly created Darkest Dungeon Facebook group. 
as we begin the last several weeks leading up to the Kickstarter campaign, this is where a good bit of information will be shared. So be sure to go join up and take part in the discussions as each new update is made. And that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.